Hi, I'm Kevin. Oh, I'm uh, a member of the Missouri Militia. And uh, I was asked to uh, go over uh, medical supplies that you might want to consider in a prepping environment. Um, there's lots of different first aid kits, medical kits that you can get. Some of the more simple ones are like this. You know, uh, it just has some band-aids, some burn ointment, and things of that nature in there. This, unfortunately, will not get you through a situation where you would be down, no hospital available for one to two weeks or even maybe more. Um, these just cover just your basic cuts, scrapes, bruises, that types of thing. Uh, when your kids get cut or grandkids or whatever, um, just basic essentials. Nothing that you could really uh, do any major trauma on or treat. Uh, any major trauma such as a serious cut or uh, a puncture wound or a leg break or an arm break or things of that nature. Um, but they're handy to have around. I'm not going to discount these. They're great to have, have around because they can perform simple things and you don't have to use a lot of other supplies for them. Uh, another first aid type of first aid kit that I want to cover is <clears throat> what they call an IFAC kit. Now an IPAC kit is a first aid kit, more or less like a uh, tactical first aid kit. Uh, you see a lot of uh, military members uh, carrying these on them on their person all the time. Uh, the IFAC stands for Improved First Aid Kit. I used to think it was Individual First Aid Kit for a long time, so I was corrected on that. I didn't know. Is it IFAC? What is it? IFAC, I-F-A-K. Improved first aid kit. And they call it an improved first aid kit because the troops um, during World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam, and so forth, carried first aid kits on their person to be able to, uh, and it was, it was to carry medical supplies to just treat that person. It wasn't used to, you know, for me to take out and treat somebody else with my supplies. It was used to, you remove it from the person when they're injured, and you use their supplies to treat them. And uh, these are great to put in a bug out bag in your car um, just to treat yourself. Some of the items that are inside one of these kits is a tourniquet, such as this. And uh, what this does is goes on your, on your person and then you put it on where you need to put it on at and it comes with this little handy thing here that you twist until it tightens up and then you clamp it and then seal it off. And you're supposed to put the time and date on it that you put it on that way when you do get medical help that, you know, but in a situation where you're down and you can't get to a hospital, you know, this is kind of a last result. After so long of a period of time, you're gonna need to handle that trauma differently. Um, and that's something that, that has to be taken into consideration when you're prepping for first aid. Uh, some of the other things that uh, are included in this kit are EMT shears. Uh, one of these uh, needles. And uh, this needle is for a uh, tension pneumothorax case you were to get a stab wound, a bullet wound, uh, some sort of a puncture wound, wound where it uh, affects your chest cavity. Uh, these things are used to, you know, that air would get into your, into your chest cavity and start putting pressure on your lung, thereby starting to collapse your lung, and then you would, you would eventually die from a lack of breathing. Uh, what, this, what this is used for is when the wound is sealed up, you uh, put it in a particular location and it allows that air to escape and then allows you to breathe and your lung fill back up that, that remaining area so then you're able to breathe. Um, and this releases air and doesn't allow the air to come back into the chest cavity. But you have to seal up the other wounds, <coughs> dress those wounds first before applying this. Uh, and uh, Doc is our uh, combat medic and he, uh, has a class that he puts on, and it's a combat medic trained, and he instructs everyone on how to properly use these 
uh, devices and things that you would find in your uh, first in your iPad kit. And they cover a lot of trauma. I mean, you have all sorts of things in here. Uh, <coughs> An Israeli bandage, you have uh, uh, clotting gauze in case you were to get, you know, a real <coughs> bad wound, you'd be, have to be able to pack your wound with this clotting gauze to stop bleeding uh, before or even with applying a tourniquet. And it has some other medical supplies in there too. And what's nice about this is it can all get sealed up and go and hook right on your backpack or something, and they're very easy to, to remove. They can even go on your belt if you wanted to do it that way also. But uh, in a home environment where you have yourself, your wife, your kids, you're not gonna want just one of these for everybody. That's not gonna be able to treat a whole lot of different traumas that you might experience. Uh, that's when I went with, and I, and I thought about this for a long time. I thought, what you know? <clears throat> what if something did happen and we were down for two weeks or a month? We wouldn't be able to get to a hospital. I would need all those medical supplies that basically, for the most part, a hospital has to treat a lot of those traumas. And uh, I got a little overwhelmed at first, and I kind of went through a list of all the things I might possibly need, and I overwhelmed myself. I thought, wow, well, how am I going to gather this? What am I going to use this for? What am I going to use that for? Well, what I did was I went out and purchased a, uh, a trauma pack. And this is a trauma pack. Uh, has lots of first aid supplies in it. A lot of which I have added over time too, because I've also taken additional supplies and added to it. Uh, some things that uh, I had to add to it were um, some colloidal silver. Now I have a colloidal silver gel that can be applied for first aid and uh, uh, colloidal silver solution that could be used. Uh, a lot of the supplies that I don't have with me today, they're too bulky to carry, but stuff like saline solution, uh, hydrogen peroxide, isopropyl alcohol. And what I do is, is every time I go to the store, I'll buy a few things and then I'll bring it home and then I'll put it with um, a lot of my um, supplemental first aid supplies and uh, other resources that I use to gather and I am no means and promoting that you steal <laughs> but uh, during hospital visits uh, my wife has had some uh, uh, medical problems and she was in the hospital uh, quite a few times over the past year and uh, they leave their medical supplies sitting around the room. And I even asked one of the nurses, is this, what are y'all gonna do with this? Oh, we're just gonna throw it away. And I said, well, I said, do you mind if I take some of this? And she goes, well, we're really not supposed to let you, but I guess if I walk out of the room and it's not here anymore, I guess it doesn't matter. So I was able to acquire some additional things. Uh, I have some vacuum bottles, <laughs> which are very good in case you have to uh, perform a procedure called a phlebotomy. Uh, also, they're also useful for, uh, you know, you have a chest wound or something, you start filling up with some fluid, you need a way to drain that <coughs> off. So you're gonna have to be able to do a procedure to drain some of that off. And uh, so back, I got uh, some of these plastic vacuum bottles for, for that specific purpose. Uh, some of the other things that I got too, uh, were these uh, uh, needles for uh, blood collection and so forth. You can use these for uh, IVs and various things like that, these uh, butterfly valves. And, uh, and <clears throat> some of this is uh, personal supply as well because uh, I have a blood condition. I have to have my blood taken off every three to four months. And so in a situation where I'm down, I would not be able to do that, or I wouldn't be able to go to the hospital. So I acquire some of these things so that I could be able to perform those procedures myself. And of course, you know, you have to know what you're doing too. So you have to be educated on that. And that's where some of the uh, material that Doc will cover uh, in the uh, combat medic class will help with that. I also kind of thought of 
Well, there's other uh, situations in which I would have to um, uh, be able to perform. You know, so I acquired, actually I got this for a uh, Christmas gift uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, it's, it's great reading, and if you ever have to perform some sort of a, a surgery, should you ha actually absolutely have to, uh, this book would have uh, really helped me out, and it's called Emergency War Surgery. And uh, it covers a lot of different techniques, how to, uh, you know, wounds, injuries to the chest, injuries to the ear, uh, other major injuries, uh, doing tracheometries, uh, various things like that, emergency stuff. I mean, in, in a very, in a situation where you're down for two to three weeks with no hospital available and you have a serious trauma like that, you're obviously not going to let your loved one die. I mean, you're not going to let them lay there and die. You're going to try to do something. So I try to prepare myself as much as I can. Uh, another uh, other material that's helpful for uh, covering first aid, Boy Scout Handbook. Great thing to have on hand. They cover a lot of basic first aid in it. Uh, this trauma pack comes with uh, instructions as well, uh, covering how to do all sorts of different first aid, trauma type first aid. Uh, other books that, that I have had that have subjects on first aid, as long as other things, are this emergency and preparedness and survival guide that I happen to pick up. Uh, and then also things such as uh, a back to basics, a homesteading book and various things like that. Um, and I also have, obviously, a surgery kit, too. Other things that you might have is, um, you know, you might have to be able to suture a wound. You might have a big enough cut that, uh, you know, you have to be able to clean that cut out with a saline solution and uh, clean it out and suture it up. So I also have a suturing and uh, staple kit that I had picked up at a uh, prepping seminar that was in Lebanon, Missouri. I think they have it every year. And uh, so I was able to pick some of those materials up and, uh, and acquire those. So anything that has to do with anything medical, I try to acquire from any type of source that I can possibly gather. Um, what if Callaway County decided to blow up or was under a terrorist attack? Uh, you would need to be able to uh, have some uh, potassium iodide uh, to protect your thyroid gland in a case of a nuclear emergency. So I also have some of those as well. And I uh, acquired these, and they have instructions on the back as far as the dosage is concerned, uh, depending on the age and so forth. And these are designed to only take for like a, a week or two. So I have some, <coughs> some of those too. I've acquired some of that. Um, the other thing I looked at too when I was trying to uh, put together my first, uh, first aid supplies is uh, what am I going to do if I get a cold? What am I going to do if I get the flu? You know, cold medicines won't be available unless you stock up on those, and then those can get very bulky and can get very expensive. So I went the route of uh, acquiring, you know, herbal remedies and so forth. And uh, I found some of those herbal remedies actually work better than the cold medicines that I can pick up in the store. Um, you know, things like uh, the colloidal silver. Uh, various other things like uh, tinctures, peppermint oil, oregano oil, uh, you know, some uh, echinacea golden seal, things of that nature. A lot of those things are very useful. Of course, you always want to check with your doctor before you actually take something to see if you can take it, because it can have interactions with other medications. Um, so the things I consider, some of the things that you might want to consider when you build your own kit is uh, collect the items you need or that you think you're gonna need. Uh, you know, you can customize the, the pros of building your own kit, or you can customize it to things you need for your medical health and your family's medical health. Uh, some of the cons to building your own kit is it can take an extremely long period of time to gather up all of these things and purchase them one by one over a period of time. Uh, pros to purchasing a kit like this is it's going to have most of the items you need and then you can add things to it. Um, the cons to it is, is it can be expensive. 
uh, one of these kits can run anywhere from $150 on up <coughs> to, to purchase one of these. Uh, I chose to go that route because it gave me a good start and uh, uh, to getting that. But then I'm able to get you know, the, the items that I need. I ran across a couple of websites too that um, I use to also purchase other little things that I might possibly need. <coughs> and I have you know, a handout here that uh, goes over some of these trauma kits and medical supplies so that you can take, take in consideration some of these. Uh, one of them is stlmedical.com, which is located here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. They supply all kinds of medical supplies and they, they will sell to the public. So it's a good place to collect certain things. And they have a wide variety of supplies, not just your regular first aid stuff, but they have things that, uh, uh, you know, diabetic supplies, things of that nature. They have all sorts of stuff that you can purchase from them. Another one is uh, practicaltrauma.com and a site called cprsavers.com. They have a whole slew of different types of kits that you can purchase to give yourself a, a start on that. Uh, and I also included in on here a site uh, called doomandbloom.net that covers a lot of varying subjects on first aid and prepping. Uh, they have a lot of different things such as uh, what about the uh, you know acquiring of antibiotics and so forth uh, to prevent infection, infection and stuff. And they go over they go over things such as the fish antibiotics which are basically the same thing, only for fish. Um, and you can, you can purchase those online as well, and then, but you have to be able to store them in a proper manner. And they talk about things of, of that nature on the website as well, about how to store uh, antibiotics and uh, how to keep them in life, the actual lifetime of them. So I don't know if you want to start passing these around. I also included some things that are, that came with my trauma pack when I, when I bought it. And that might give you a good start to kind of think about things that you might want to acquire should you decide to want to start building your own. I thought it would really give a good start for somebody to have that as well, to have a list of things that you might want to consider in your first aid kit. Uh, I also, in, along with my herbal remedies that I have, I also have a, uh, and I have a couple different versions of this too, uh, a foraging guide. Um, a lot of the things that are covered in this foraging guide cover a lot of things that you might find in your backyard or in the woods, and they, they cover how to use them medicinally and for food. So it's something else you may want to consider too. And I am told that I'm about out of time. Damn out of time. <laughs> it's very hard to cover a lot of this information in a short period of time, but at least some of this can give you a start on acquiring some of the things that you need to be able to treat yourself and your family. Does that also include like an EpiPen or any of the other things that you do some of these websites? Can you get that stuff? Or? Yes, you, you can. I can't get some of these things through there. How much does the iPad kit run? They vary. They vary. 